Welcome to Sportsbeat. I'm Dave Scarangella. I own a website called DullesDistrict.com, and it's time for the playoffs. In high school football, four area teams have made the playoffs, including Stonebridge, which beat South Lakes Friday for its fifth consecutive Liberty District title. They won't have to look far to figure out who their first round opponent will be. They will play the very same South Lakes team Friday night at 7.30. Let's take a look at the highlights, though, from last week's game between Stonebridge and South Lakes. <laughs> Marcus Harris got Stonebridge on the board first with this three-yard run to make it seven to nothing. Following a South Lakes punt, Marcus Harris makes this run to move the ball into Seahawk territory. Harris then breaks to the outside for another 20 yards on his way to 166 yards in the first half. That would set up this 21-yard field goal by Abdul Shaban to make it 10 to nothing. South Lakes answered with this 48-yard touchdown pass from Sean Reyna to Sean Price to close the margin to 10-7. One minute later, Harris counters with a 49-yard scoring run of his own to make it 17-7, and it would remain that way until halftime. Stonebridge struck quickly after intermission as Kyle Gavea hit Spencer Rossitano for a 34-yard touchdown to make it 24-7. Stonebridge pressure stops this South Lakes punt attempt, giving the Bulldogs a short field to work on. Eight plays later, Harris bulls in from the one to make it 31-7. Stonebridge's defensive front then made life miserable for South Lakes quarterback Sean Reyna, forcing a fumble. Three plays later, Harris gets his fourth touchdown to make it 38-7. Juwan Jones scores on this run in the fourth period to make it 38-14. Then freshman Sean Rankin-Bell breaks this run to put the ball inside the South Lakes five. That sets up this three-yard scoring run by Adrian Thomas to make it 45-14. The win gives Stonebridge its fifth straight Liberty District title. They will meet the same South Lakes team at home in the first round of the playoffs. The second area team to make the playoffs is Loudoun County. They have bounced back from a couple seasons ago when they had a winless season, and now they've made the playoffs for the second straight year. They will be playing James Wood this Friday at 7.30, and behind the passing of Austin Campbell and the receiving of Micah Yube, they've had quite a season. They ended their year with a big win over Potomac Falls. Let's take a look. Loudoun County gets on the board when Micah Yube out-wrestles Leo Pittman for this Austin Campbell pass from 18 yards out to make it 7-0. Potomac Falls would fumble on its next series, giving Loudoun County excellent field position. Campbell converts the turnover in one play, tossing a 20-yard touchdown pass to Chase Williams to make it 14-0. The lead would grow to 21-0 when Zach Green blocks this punt, gets a room service bounce, and carries it 35 yards to the end zone for the touchdown. Loudoun County would go 99 yards for its next score as Campbell throws from his own end zone to a U who gets the ball to midfield. After a penalty, Campbell goes back to pass again, hitting a U for a 47-yard gain to move the ball deep into Potomac Falls territory. Two plays later, Mike Howard carries it over from the one to make it 28 to nothing. Campbell almost hits a U with another touchdown pass here late in the second quarter, but pass interference is called. With the ball moved to the 10, Campbell then threw to the other side of the field, hitting DeAndre Morris for the touchdown to make it 35 to nothing. Campbell would make one more big throw early in the third quarter before heading to the bench, completing this 39-yarder to a U. Callie Brown would then add this 22-yard field goal to make the final score 38 to nothing. The win gives Loudoun County an 8-2 record as they head to the playoffs for their second straight year with a first-round game at home against James Wood. 
The third team to make the playoffs from the area is Parkview. They actually won't play in the first round of the playoffs as they're going to get a first round bye because they ended up taking the number two seed in Region 2 Division 3. They finished their season with a big win over Freedom, including a number of unusual plays, such as a 110-yard field goal attempt. Let's take a look. Brandon Lee gets things started for Parkview, going 15 yards for the touchdown that makes it 7 to nothing. Yes, that is a 110-yard field goal attempt by Freedom, but the snap goes through the end zone for a safety to make it 9 nothing. Darius Beal shows some hard inside running as he gets the ball down to the Freedom 5. Yes, that is linebacker Eric Palma at quarterback and number 56 lumbers for a few yards down to the one. On the next play, he hands off to Beal, who sweeps the right side for the touchdown to make it 16 to nothing. Yes, this is a 68-yard field goal attempt, but it's a fake and ends up being an incomplete pass that turns the ball over to Parkview. Not to be outdone, Parkview tries a field goal, and it's blocked, with Freedom getting the ball deep in Parkview territory. But two plays later, Tyler Roberts makes the interception to give Parkview the ball near midfield. Tommy Sadeski caps the ensuing drive with a five-yard run to make it 23 to nothing. Nathan Santana stops another freedom drive with this interception at the Eagles 43. On the next play, Darius Beal tight ropes the sideline to move the ball down to the Freedom 6. Watch left guard Tuan Tran. He catches this lateral and goes the rest of the way for a touchdown to make it 30 to nothing. Dennis April scores on a one-yard run early in the third period to wrap up the Parkview scoring. The win gives Parkview a 7-3 record, and combined with Goochland's win over Western Albemarle, gives the Patriots a bye in the first round of the playoffs. The fourth team from the area to make the playoffs is Broad Run. They also won't be playing this week as they have the top seed in Region 2 Division 4. Now in Division 4, one other area team came all so close as Briarwoods just missed the playoffs by eight-tenths of a point in the VHSL Power Points. They finished their season strong with a big win in their last game of the season against Dominion. Let's take a look. Michael Brownlee got Briarwoods moving with this 22-yard pass to Kyle Hoffler to get the ball inside the Dominion 5. On the next play, Brownlee takes it the rest of the way for the touchdown that makes it 7 to nothing. Dominion would fumble on its next possession and Briarwoods would take over on the Titan 34. Three plays later, Brownlee eludes tacklers on his way to a 19-yard scoring run to make it 14 to nothing. Turnovers would hit Briarwoods as well as Brownlee is stripped by DeAndre Reeves and Dominion recovers in Falcon territory. Reeves then puts his team on his back, first running the ball inside the Briarwoods 25. He then carries inside the 10. Then he takes it into the end zone from six yards out to make it 14 to six. Another turnover hits Briarwoods as Derek Lewis picks off this Brownlee pass and returns it deep into Falcon territory. Five plays later, Reeves scores from seven yards out to make it 14 to 12. That's as close as Dominion got as one Brownlee carry moves the ball past midfield. The next Brownlee carry gets the ball inside the 30. Allen Jackson takes it the final eight yards to make it 21 to 12. Midway through the second quarter, Kyle Hoffler returns this punt to inside the Dominion 20. 
two plays later, Brownlee goes 15 yards for the touchdown that made it 28-12. Brownlee, who gained 227 yards on the night, gets his fourth TD of the game from 19 yards out to make the final score 35-12. That's all we have for this week's show. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to watch this show on a little bigger screen, it is shown regularly on Comcast Cable Channel 2 multiple times throughout the day, so check the listings and you'll be able to see when it'll be on next on Comcast Cable Channel 2. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Dave Scarangella. We'll see you next week on Sportsbeat.